Hi everyone, this is 31 Pockets, and I'd like to welcome everyone to part number two of my D610 CPU and memory upgrade video. Now the next thing I have to do is clean off the thermal paste that's on the back side of the electrode or the, um, the heat sink that helps pull the heat out of the CPU. We're just wiping it off with a piece of paper towel to get it clean. Now we always want to make sure we have our heat sink inspected, make sure there's no fuzz or dust or anything built up in it. We already cleaned this one out a few days ago so our next step is to take a little bit of thermal paste. Now we're going to dab a little tiny bit now you don't need much for this because this is a laptop they don't require as much for the laptops as they do for the desktop so we're just going to take a little dab of the thermal paste I'm just going to dab it on my finger and we're going to just put a little tiny bit on the back side of the CPU the new CPU it just has a small it just has a small area where it goes for laptops and we're just going to smear it on so you guys can see it. Which is right here. Once we have that a little bit of thermal paste on the back of that CPU, we're going to just take our heat sink and put it back down over the top of the CPU and fasten it down. kind of tricky you got to slide the heat sink in first and line it up before you once you get the heat sink sink in place it usually kind of guides you into where the little screw holes are and then we can simply tighten it down now we're just going to go a little bits at a time on each screw till we want to sink it down evenly into the thermal paste on the back side of the CPU So we just got to go a little bit at a time until we get it down. Once it starts to tighten up, then we can go a little bit more. Now we don't want to go too tight with this because it has kind of like a spring backing on it that puts the right amount of pressure on the back side of the CPU to make the connection. Now we're going to install the memory. And now we have a notch on our memory which is right here where my fingers pointing and it corresponds with this little slot here in the socket so we're going to take this and flip it in like so once we get it into the socket we have the the notch lined up so let me see if I can zoom in on a little bit so you guys can see that well sorry about that Okay, now we do have it lined up in the socket hole. And this memory on this unit is fairly simple. We just press in, make sure it's in the socket, and then press down and it'll snap right into place. Now this will take care of our memory that's underneath our keypad uh, keyboard. Now the next memory, I already have that in there installed and I'm going to flip the, the laptop over and show you you guys where that's at next. Now our lower memory is right underneath this cover on the bottom of the Dell 610. You just need a small Phillips head screwdriver put it in here to turn it out and I'm just pulling this out for a sample and to remove the memory if you have the a couple 256's in here you just mainly want to flip back each side and then it lifts out and then you can see the slot right there and it basically goes back together the same way when you install the new memory you're going to want to line it up with a slot on the socket which is right there so you guys can see it and then we're going to push it in and then we just push down Actually on this one you have to 
make sure it's snapped in good. And then it just snaps back into place. And that's just about it. We're going to now put it back together and give it a quick test. Put that back in. Now we're going to reinstall and reconnect up our keypad, <clears throat> our keyboard. So we're going to take our socket and we're starting to go out of alignment here. So straighten that back out. And it goes down over. Our socket is right here where my finger's pointing that we're going to connect it into. Now this is tricky holding a camera at the same time. Tends to get a little bit uh, goofy here. Okay, we found, found it. And that just about does it. Now that's snapped in. Now we're going to take our keypad, our keyboard, and we're going to push our tabs underneath the lower bezel. It's kind of tricky. Okay, that's got that lined up. Next thing is putting our screws back in. There's one. And our second one goes on this side. thing is we're going to fold back the screen and put fasten our we want to make sure we take these two tabs and put our top trim bezel back on we're going to put it in poke those two tabs in there and carefully press down on it Now our next step is to take and put our battery in. We're going to flip it over and take our battery, line it up, and drop it in, and flip it back over, and give it a try. Now it's probably going to come up into the BIOS because we did change the memory so we'll just see what happens we'll just give it a quick try we're gonna hit the power button now okay now once we've changed the memory we can see the amount of, of system memory has changed strike the F1 key to continue uh, F2 to run the setup utility. Now this memory is the right memory that goes in here so well, all we're, we need to do is press F1 and it should calibrate itself in automatically. So we're going to do that next. you guys can see it's going through its first uh, staging of readjusting for the memory and Windows should come up normally after that.
Now once Windows is up, we're going to go over and we're going to go down to Start. And then we're going to go over to My Computer. And then we're going to go to View System Information. And now we can see we have our new 2.13 gigahertz processor and we have now two gigs of RAM. So that's pretty much it. And um, this should make the computer uh, be a little bit more snappier and it's going to play vid videos a little bit more smoother now that this is done. So that's pretty much it. And um, now that it's set up, we'll just give it a quick, um, I'm going to shut it down and then reboot it to see if it's booting any faster with a new CPU. We're going to close down the system. Now that we have the new CPU and in the memory complete, we're going to give it a quick startup and see how it boots up. I don't really have a timer or anything, but we'll just watch and see if it looks any faster. Now, one thing nice about this newer CPU is that it processes a lot quicker than the 1.6, and it also helps to save the battery. Um, it's not using so much energy steadily processing, so it really helps in that part from all the, the literature and the information I've read about it. So that's pretty much going to do it. The, um, we're now completed with our upgrade. And um, well, our D610 turned out to be quite a little uh, old, snappy, single core laptop computer. Now, nevertheless, it's still no match for a dual core computer, no matter what anyone says. But for the price, uh, it's fairly inexpensive to fix up one of these older um, D610s if you have one laying around. Now you wouldn't want to go out and buy one and then try and do these upgrades to it. It wouldn't be practical. You're better off trying to, to uh, stick with uh, a more modern computer, uh, a laptop that does have the dual core system in it. But if you have one laying around, um, if somebody was really good on eBay with uh, bidding and auctioning and uh, watching their um, the parts and things like that for these, it probably would be a cost of anywhere from $30 to $85 on the high side to upgrade this thing. Now, the computer works great for schoolwork, academics, light level videos like watching on uh, videos on YouTube or something like that. You could probably get away with playing some light level gaming but for the new modern games, this wouldn't really work. Um, I would never recommend putting Windows 7 operating system in this uh, D610. Now, I think it uses a little bit too much resources, and not to mention, the Windows 7 is basically for commercial programming. Uh, a lot of it's for uh, video animation and high definition, and a lot in gaming. Um, and it wouldn't really make any sense to put Windows 7 in, into this computer. Now I have seen a couple uh, D610s with Windows 7 in them, but usually when I do see it, it's typically a computer that's for sale and it's, it's not hard to figure out why. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode on the upgrade of the Dell 610, the CPU along with the memory. And until next time, this is 3-1-Pockets, and thanks for watching.